you know, now we have the results of the Grantoplex ASA trial, the VLEA, which will likely be presented at EHA this year. And with that, Venetoclax and HMA-based therapies are now standard of care for older unfit patients with AML. However, uh, this definition of fitness versus unfitness for intensive chemotherapy is often uh, debated because there's no consensus regarding which objective measure, measure should be used. And a lot of these measures are very cumbersome to use in clinic. And consequently, this assessment is often subjective um, in the clinic or on the inpatient service. Uh, so there have been uh, questions by critics about the benefit of um, intensive chemotherapy um, in older fit patients uh, because there have been questions that whether all the patients treated on the Venetoclax HMA trials were truly unfit or not. And if they were not unfit, could they have benefited more from intensive chemotherapy instead? And consequently, um, there have been calls for randomized controlled trials against intensive chemotherapy and penetoclax based regimens in, in this population. So to answer this question, um, we, um, we analyzed the outcomes with tendinocytobin and venetoclax regimen, which was our institutional phase two trial. We compared the outcomes with intensive chemotherapy. Uh, so this was a retrospective comparison. Uh, and the way we did it is we used propensity score matching so that so as to ensure that the intensive chemotherapy group and the venetoclax decitabin group would be comparable to, com to account for the most important um, factors uh, which confer um, differential outcomes so that we can, we can control for some of the confounders. So um, to give you a brief idea of how patients were treated on this venetoclax decitabin trial was that patients received decitabin 20 milligram per meter square for 10 days for induction, followed by five days for maintenance after they achieved CRCRI. Patients uh, received venetoclax throughout. If uh, cycle one day 21 bone marrow showed blast clearance, we held venetoclax to allow for count recovery and further reduction of venetoclax duration was allowed uh, in cases of myelosuppression. And um, this, uh, so to the other aspect of this study was that because of this question of fitness versus unfitness for chemotherapy, we used a validated established method to determine uh, fitness for chemotherapy. And this is called the treatment related mortality score. And this was um, derived from over 2,000 SWOG and MD Anderson patients. And because this, this, this score was derived from patients outside, treated outside MD Anderson as well, that led, that contributed to, to some external validity of this analysis. And this score has over eight baseline factors like age, performance status, blood counts, laboratory studies, and so forth. And um, there is a validated cutoff of 13.1. If you have a score more than that, you are at a very high risk of early mortality from intensive chemotherapy. If you have a lower than, lower than that cutoff score, then you have a 3% uh, treatment related mortality expectation from intensive chemotherapy. And this score is used at a lot of outside centers to, to assign patients to different treatment protocols. So for propensity score matching, we took uh, a historical cohort of for 1,300 patients. And uh, in the tendinocytobin venetoclax frontline patients, we had 85 patients. We used uh, one is to one matching for the whole population, 85 patients with HMA venetoclax to 85 patients with intensive chemo. And we also used one is to one matching for low risk population, which turned out to be 61%. 61 patients in the decitabin venetoclax group. And for the high-risk patients, patients who are at high risk for treatment-related mortality, we had limited numbers of uh, 40, 24 patients, so we used a one is to two match to improve um, statistical power. So what we basically found was that um, the propensity score match group was very well balanced in terms of uh, baseline factors like age, performance status, distribution of high and low risk patients, 
distribution of different ELN risk groups. Uh, overall, around um, 60, 55 to 60% patients were over the age of 70 years. Close to 30% patients in both age groups had performance tests of two or higher. And uh, over 50% patients in both groups had ELN adverse risk disease. So now that we know that our propensity score matching ensured that both these two groups were comparable, now we can talk about the outcomes knowing that we have controls for some of the major um, determinants of outcomes. In the whole population, we found that um, decitabine with venetoclax offered uh, significantly higher rates of CR, significantly lower rates of relapse, and lower rates of 30-day mortality. And uh, in patients who are at low risk for treatment-related mortality, we saw that um, venetoclax and decitabine offered higher rates of CR, lower rates of refractory disease, and lower rates of 30-day mortality. And in patients at high risk of treatment-related mortality, we saw that the 30-day mortality was 0% with HMA and venetoclax compared to 33% with intensive chemo as expected. Uh, while we saw that decitabine and venetoclax did not uh, lead to any differential outcomes in patients who are at low risk or high risk of treatment-related mortality. In terms of overall survival, we found a significant difference uh, in the overall population. Uh, we saw that patients treated with decitabine and venetoclax had an overall survival of over 12 months compared to intensive chemotherapy, where they had median overall survival of five months. In patients at low risk of treatment-related mortality, that overall survival benefit still persisted at 15 months versus seven months. And this was more drastic in patients with high risk of treatment-related mortality, where decitabine venetoclax offered a median survival of nine months versus 2.4 months with intensive chemotherapy and decitabine venetoclax offered a 70% lower risk of death in patients with high risk of early mortality. Uh, we also did a subgroup analysis which showed that um, better overall survival in most subgroups of age, performance status, blast count, type of AML, and risk of disease. Um, most subgroups had better overall survival with decitabine venetoclax compared to intensive chemotherapy. The only potential exceptions were patients with antecedent hematological disorders and those with NRAS or KRAS mutations. And to confirm these findings, we did a multivariable analysis for unmatched variables, and that confirmed that decitabine venetoclax offered significantly higher odds of achieving a CR excuse me, lower rates of relapse, lower rates of 30-day mortality, and um, improved overall survival. So I think in summary, this study confirms what we knew intuitively, that this item in 10 days with venetoclax offers excellent and potentially better outcomes compared to intensive chemotherapy in older patients with newly diagnosed AML. The second point was that patients who are at low risk as well as high risk of early mortality from intensive chemotherapy, both of these groups appear to benefit from decitabine and venetoclax. And based on these findings, um, clinical trials to ev evaluate the efficacy of venetoclax and HMA in younger, as well as older fit population, um, those trials are currently ongoing.